Brothers and sisters, may God's love be felt by your families today. As I speak in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic that has contaminated the world, brought economies to a standstill, and governments to declare a state of calamity with several locking down their cities and countries to contain this virus, I, as your servant, would like to leave you with some thoughts. I start with a message of hope. God has spoken to the prophets and ordinary men and women through the ages, assuring us that He is in control and He will be with us till the end of time. Jeremiah 17 verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Let us recollect ourselves and focus on just four things as we reflect on the goings on in our society, in our world today. First is holiness. Our CFC theme for this year is Call to Holiness. Was it coincidental that our call to holiness is immediately tested by a pandemic? Perhaps our God is reminding us that holiness is tested not during our good times, not when we feel about, nice about things and we feel the affirmation of people around us. But the true test of holiness is during the tough times, when we face trials, tragedies, and difficult people. After all, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, Paul says, Let us purify ourselves from everything that makes body or soul unclean, and let us be completely holy by living in awe of God. This pandemic should remind us that perhaps we have become too busy chasing after worldly things, and in the process we have forgotten to live our lives. We have become too busy to try to, to achieve. We have become too engrossed in trying to accumulate. In the process, anxiety envelops us. And when we experience failure or difficulty, when our dreams turn into nightmares, instead of bouncing back, we, we experience deep depression. Brothers and sisters, let us remember that the measure of our faith is the extent of worrying we do. The more faith we have, the less we should worry. But the less faith we have, the more we worry. The next reflection is on the word order. It is time to put order into our lives, perhaps. It is a call for us to, to reassess what our priorities are in life. If you recall your international council at the start of the year, guided by the Lord's promptings, saw it fit that we should focus on our building of relationships again, starting with our own families. You might as well recall that uh, we allotted one full week every month for all of us to just strengthen our familial ties, reconnect with old friends and relatives. Because we have hope that this pandemic shall pass just like the bubonic plague, the cholera outbreak, and all the other pandemics that the world has experienced in the past. And we will know better that life is short and we must start to build relationships and nurture them while we can. And since there are now community um, quarantines in place in some areas globally, some people call it lockouts. And even for those areas that continue to have freedom of movement, given the uncertainty surrounding this COVID-19, I must say that it is just about right for people to stay home. This, brothers and sisters, is in itself a tremendous opportunity to spend more time with family doing our family prayer meetings, and just building and nurturing family ties. And this pandemic also makes us reflect and resolve to put order in our environment. You know, 
the kind of abuse that we put on Mother Earth has, has caused so much damage that according to scientists, the global warming problem that results from pollution will make our Earth extinct in the next perhaps few generations if left ignored. We cannot ignore the science of today. Rising temperatures, melting ice caps, um, rising sea levels, savage wildfires and disappearing lakes, and even simultaneous volcanic eruptions along the Pacific Rim of fire, which has resulted in valuable temples and rich cultural artifacts being destroyed. Clearly, we must do our part if we want our God to do this. The next word for reflection is perseverance. Holiness that is not born out of effort, that is not nurtured by perseverance, will be full of holes. The many holes of our lives, temptations, trials, tragedies, that may lead us to sin, need to be covered by our perseverance to keep our covenant with God and be holy as He is holy, to keep Satan from dominating us in our lives. We cannot be trapped into this complacency of being half holy and only when it is convenient and for others to see. To live a holy life in today's world is admittedly difficult. St. Therese of Lisieux reminds us that there is no such thing as half a saint. You must be a whole saint or no saint at all. And, and to be a saint requires perseverance on our part. But perseverance that is not accompanied by grace will not progress into holiness. Our lives will continue to be pockmarked by the devil's deceptive arrows that may keep us proud, selfish, unforgiving, lacking in peace and joy, and miserable. And the last word or phrase for our reflection is entrusting everything to God. And this leads me to a very important, and this may very well be an understatement, aspect of our lives, which is prayer. This pandemic Brethren, is a call to holiness, and without prayer, holiness cannot be achieved. The collective prayer of His people will prod our God to respond, because He cannot play a role in our lives if we do not ask Him to. Remember that He gave us free will as a gift. It is up to us to use it the way we want. That's why He waits for our call. We must call Him if we want to be blessed. The word entrust has the root word trust. We must trust that our God did not cause this pandemic, but He certainly can allow it for a good reason. This pandemic is an invitation for each one of us to turn inward, to reflect, to pray, and to resolve that we must be holy and we can be holy only if we trust God with our transformation. Reliance on God is the message of this pandemic. We must entrust everything in our lives to Him, including this particular circumstance. Oftentimes, we do not grasp uh, why things we do not like to happen do happen. But as Father Rolando Arjonillo, in his post on his website, Catholics, striving for holiness said and I quote we need to offer filial surrender abandoning ourselves in God's hands like a child who knows that his father always gives him what is best and say with faith omnia in bono that is all things work unto the good close quote brothers and sisters this too shall pass. And for good reason. After all, Peter chapter 5 verse 10 tells us that after we have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who calls us to share His eternal glory in union with Christ, 
will himself perfect us and give us firmness, strength, and a sure foundation. If we can only learn to let go and let God take over, our joy will be complete. For he has promised us a future of hope in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. We just need to trust. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, Paul exhorts us, and I quote, Be joyful always, pray constantly, be thankful in all circumstances. He did not say, be thankful in only the good circumstances of our lives. He underlines the word, all. Let us then be grateful in all circumstances, because in all things, God will work for our good, especially couples for Christ and all His faithful believers globally who are called according to His purpose. Romans 8, verse 28. Paraphrase. Brethren, let us then live through this pandemic, taking the necessary physical precautions. Keep our immune system strong, sleep and eat well and stay fit. Wash with water and soap and alcohol often and do not touch your face. Avoid crowds and for the meantime, shaking hands, kissing and greeting cheek to cheek and all the other advice we get from our government health authorities. But in these times too, apart from the physical precautions, let us have our spiritual preparation anchored on hope. Hope that this will pass like all the other pandemics the world has experienced. Because hope is about holiness, order, perseverance, and entrusting everything to God. Let us then continue to pray for deliverance from this disease. And let us offer special prayers for those who have no means to protect themselves. And also for the health care workers and civil servants, who are in the middle of the battlefield helping to contain the virus and put order to the world. Let us trust in the Lord, for He is our hope. God bless your families, brothers and sisters.